Sorry about that. So when you talk about being less of a slave to your device, I know it's very early, but do you see this as something that replaces much of what you do with the smartphone eventually? 
communication, taking pictures, sharing information, accessing information. Is that basically what it's about? I think so far what we've been trying to do is uh, is really cover your bases for things that you want to do often that are not a very involved interaction. Like, if you're going to like read a book or something, that's not what we're, I mean, you could conceivably do it, that's not what we've been targeting. Uh, but if you just want to you know, catch a text message or something like that and be able to just uh, reply to it quickly somehow, or as I said, you know, the most immediate thing they want to do is simply catch a picture because, you know, the moment's passed at some point. We want to make those things really easy. I just took a picture, for example. Um, so it's those class of things, and it's kind of, I feel like, 80% of the stuff that you do uh, that uh, um, that's just immediate and quick. Uh, we want to cover that <coughs> as best we can. And those are small, right? Those are effectively small things, right? This is pretty much, you know, this is very similar hardware-wise to the phone. It does not have a 3G radio, so if I'm outside, I'm going to need to tether through my phone. Um, but but obviously at home at work, I don't need that. I ask question back there, sir. And if you could stay tuned. Yeah, Amir Afradi from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, so you, you're offering these devices for $1,500 for pre-order for developers. Uh, can, can you tell us whether the price for consumers is going to be around that um, level and also when uh, when this will be available for developers to actually create uh, apps uh, you know, that, could, that could run right. this device? And, right. and, and last, and sorry, yeah. last, I have to ask, how's Larry doing? Is he okay? Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let, let me touch base on the... Uh, on, uh, uh, Okay, so no, that, that is not the consumer edition. Um, we expect the consumer edition to be significantly uh, lower cost, but we were at the same time, it's not. We're not trying to make a body product. So it's not, you know, hopefully, it won't be something ending in ninety nine. Uh, we'll see when that's required. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I was saying uh, anyway. We don't have a target uh, a consumer price yet. It will be significantly uh, lower, uh, but we do view this as a premium. You know, not a hundred different things like this you can buy, and we and our focus of designing it has been on the quality of the experience, uh, more so than say you know, making it as cheap as possible. Um, I know you want, do you want to talk about the titanium band a little bit? Um, so yeah, you're, you're on the okay. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of sophisticated technology integrated in the system. Um, the reason we're uh, getting the developer version out in a slightly higher price really has less to do with the particular technology that's gone through this and more to do with us wanting to create a community of, community of developers to work with us and evolve this, uh, this concept to a better concept for everyone. Uh, so when people place their pre-order today, uh, not only eventually they'll get a device, but they'll get access to Google engineers and a lot of other things that we're planning for people that the pre-order they actually releasing a cloud-based API for them, so they can uh, explore basically on this platform. But you know, we have to come up with new ideas. I think the platform is very powerful, so we'd like to enable them to experiment. Yeah, actually, Steve, maybe you could expand upon the platform. Steve, I should know, Steve is our product manager as well as the lead designer, and Baba is in charge of making it all work. <laughs> yeah, just to expand on, on that point, I think we, we came up with the idea of an Explorer edition and that available relatively early because once once we announced in April, one of the things we asked for is community feedback, feedback from media, developers, and, and customers. And we're we were just overwhelmed by the number of ideas uh, that that we received. Anywhere from uh, people who are working in a space with people with disabilities and how this could potentially change their lives. Um, to someone reached out, they're working on a, on a team for the America's Cup, and they want to be able to, to do custom applications for the America's Cup. And the bottom line is there's just so many amazing ideas that excite us, but we, we simply can't do them all ourselves. And so we want to be able to, to, to have a really powerful uh, developer platform for these developers. Yeah, and basically, sorry, if I could just reinforce, so there are two ways we expect the developers to interact with us. One is a cloud API, which we and kind of fine tuning is that's pretty far along. Uh, and, and, and once these uh, explore editions ship, that, that should be uh, ready to go. And with that, you know, you push notifications here, do some sorts of replies, and, you know, uh, get basic communication. Uh, if you want to do something more different, like let's say you want to make some, uh, 
this for the for deaf people shows them the sound that are on, on the display let's say. Uh, we're gonna let you go crazy on the device. You can flash the device, do whatever you like. That's not going to that doesn't mean that you can then ship that to, to the end consumers right away, but we're gonna take those experiences. From there we're gonna develop the right uh, the right APIs, the right kind of extensibility, uh, so that you will be able to get that in the end user sense. Uh, yes. So what do you what and do you sorry for uh, sorry, James Temple with the San Francisco Chronicle. So what do you see as the most compelling use of this product? I mean, uh, technological capability-wise, it's you know it can it, a smartphone or a GoPro can pretty much do the same thing. So what's going to really drive adoption? Well, the key is uh, let me take those two separately. Uh, definitely, you can combine together other things to try to achieve the same functionality, uh, but. We're trying to make it really easy and hands-free. And the fact that I do get you know, 10 times as many pictures throughout the day, the fact that I have captured a couple of pictures of you guys just now, uh, the fact that uh, I do get uh, alerted, you know, like certain, uh, you know, I get not all the emails, but anyway, I get certain messages so it's not flooding me, but, uh, but I know what's going on. I'm not all the time reaching in my pocket to check it. it it's about how you, the things that you can do um, more easily. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll let the, my friends here express it, but, but also just to the GoPro. GoPros are awesome. I have a lot of GoPros. And in fact, uh, some of our stunt people, uh, our athletes today have GoPros. Um, and, uh, and not only that, but actually at the rehearsal that we did uh, last week, uh, I had uh, Nick, who's the founder of GoPro, who's a uh, friend of mine, over uh, to watch. And having used a lot of GoPros, what I really want to do, I want to have you know, five GoPros with me, you know, one on my kite, one on my kite board, one on my body, but then I want to see them through glass because I want to know what they're capturing. Uh, and that, that viewfinder is amazing, and I want to be able to transmit the, that to people easily. Uh, so it's this uh, ability of having, being able to capture information easily and hands-free, uh, and at the same time, uh, you can see what it is that you're capturing and transmitting on that. The display makes a huge difference in the phone tech. Maybe you guys can take, talk more about your experiences compared to yeah, other. I'll just give a personal experience. So I'm, I'm an avid cyclist, and you, know, you asked about like a smartphone or, or other devices. So uh, I, I rode in a the Grand Fondo race up in Sonoma County a, a few months ago, maybe a month ago, and it's a six hour grueling, grueling race. And I, I was experimenting with a mode of glass, sort of a time lapse feature, which would automatically take a photo every 10 seconds. And what was beautiful about that, that experience is sort of the epitome of getting technology out of the way. Because I was able to in, enjoy the ride, or not enjoy the ride, because it was, it was a, a difficult ride, um, but also chat with my friends. And I, and I didn't have to worry about taking out my phone, uh, trying to snap pictures while riding. I didn't even have to think about the technology. And by the end of the ride, what I had was over a thousand photos that I could then, you know, pick up the best shots, and there were some really amazing shots that I could share with friends, as well as create a, a, a nice, succinct twenty-second video that I could share with people. Because that was like a lot of six-hour race of, of someone riding, but a twenty-second video—that's something my, my family and friends would, you know, would love to see, see what I did that. Uh, another quick biking example is I often do the commute from San Francisco to Google, and uh, beyond just using the camera and capturing photos, uh, often I meet up with friends. And pe when people text me, in the past with a smartphone, I usually have my phone in my, my jersey pocket, and uh, I either don't hear it or don't feel it, so I don't even receive the message. Uh, or if I do, it's very awkward to pull out my phone. With glass, the message disappears right before my eyes in a very safe, convenient manner. Uh, it's a lot like you're driving in a car and you're, you're, you're moving your mirror sort of up and out of the way. It's out of your field of view. But I was able to quickly read that message and see that he was going to be right. Uh, probably also worth adding, it's also at the right focal distance, like your rear view mirror. Uh, unlike your car's dashboard, when you look down to, um, to the dashboard, you have to change your focus. Um, this is uh, you know, far out, so it's roughly where you're looking. Uh, so very easy to see. And I mean, there's just so many situations when I'm playing with my kids, look, I'm not going to have a complicated, you know, kind of AV rig on me. Um, and, and, you know, I might pull out my phone and try to take some snaps, but 
You know, the fact is that with this device, I end up doing that 10 times as often, and I, I feel like I've not put that weird barrier between my kids. I don't have to let go of them. Um, it's, it's just, uh, it's been transformative for my lives. So just continuing on that, that thing, just expanding for maybe a few, few more seconds. Uh, this is really, the, even though this is a very rough contact, probably at the early stages, this is at least the only device that I've been able to wear for many hours a day comfortably. So I can't think of any other device that has camera connectivity that you would be willing to wear actually on your device for any extended period of time. So this allows you to wear it and be comfortable and be yourself. And it has a camera that walks with you, so it allows you to walk down to Paris and experience Paris as you would have experienced it otherwise, but have other people share that experience with you live. So these, these types of experiences could be absolutely amazing. And going back to the theme of actually connecting to other people and communicating, um, it really allows a first person point of view and communicating with images and the way that the world is seen through your eyes with other people. So I think this is a very, very compelling case, at least for our team members, this has been very compelling. So, the last thing, point I wanted to make is uh, even though we have a lot of focus on the, the social camera, the camera that's always going to be your companion, always available and connected, but Quick access to information also is a critical thing. It's very empowering. So at least for me, being able to recall certain type of information very fast without doing anything, just what is the answer I'm looking for, would be very, very empowering. Well, okay, I'll start. <laughs> so yes, sir. Uh, for example, we've seen it. Um, I'll walk my way around. Can you talk about privacy with the information you're collecting on these and how much control you give users over a camera that's basically seen what they see all the time? Yeah. Uh, we give them a tremendous amount of control. So right now, basically, you know, I just, uh, you know, I have to push this button to take a picture. And uh, that's stored locally, or is it um, that gets stored locally? Gets uh, synchronized to the cloud if you want, which all of our people who are testing pretty much want. Um, using that, it's like Google Instant uh, on your phone. Can you, not, sorry, not Google Instant. Google yeah. Instant Optimal. Sorry. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so you get. Get, uh, you get a lot of control. You can even enter a hangout, as you obviously saw, but once again, you know, you decide to do that. Um, you get full control. Yeah, it'll be, you wouldn't want to, to do crazy random things with that. I'm not surprised to see if you're pretty good. I think, uh, I think it's uh, what's well, obviously something we've experimented with. Typically, when I go around, I'll, you know, I'll say, well, can I do a feature? Or in a status setting like this, it's like, well, I did take a picture of this. Yeah, I expect so, social norms. Yeah. Exactly. I was just going to say that you know, any device, uh, there there are social etiquette developed, and I think the same will evolve for this. And uh, in many ways, it's not so different than me having a, a smartphone. Uh, now, you know, so if I'm with family or friends, uh, then you know, I'm going to I'm going to behave in a way that I do with my, my smartphone around them. If with strangers, I mean, you know, a light gas, but it's a really as far as the actual uh, policy about what we do in the data, I, you know, that's still evolving, we're still in development, but I expect it to be very consistent with Google's other policies for, for Google Suites. Uh, next, uh, Nick Dalton from the New York Times. Um, uh, two questions. One, uh, how did you guys, what, where did this come from? Did someone like, let's put glasses on our face and put a screen on it? Wearable computers. And then the um, other question I think yeah. is also for Isabel: um, Do you see more wearable devices that, that will go on you as you start to design more of these things? And what would they be? Um, so, I think this project really opened up this open up my mind a lot, and I'm inspired every day with the smart people we have on our team and the technology that we see, and how to put this together in, in different ways. And there are certain parts of the system. What if we did this and we put it together this way and that's only that? And you know, so you can see, like this is doing a lot actually, which is really, really exciting. But I can also see some people who just want super, you know, who, who doesn't want to be blocked blocking their eyes or their ears, for example. So so what a product from that. So I think this space is really, really interesting. And for some people it might not be this. For some people it might be something else, but I think um, the way the way this functions, you can totally. I think for some people, this is going to be a camera. You know, this beautiful great camera that is always on you and it's for point of view. And for some people, it's going to be about getting notifications.
patient while fighting. Um, and, um, but I think it's really, really exciting to move away from this boxes that we see, that we have all around. Like I, I have five different boxes. I have a tablet and I have my, my laptop. And, and I think um, as a team, we're, we're excited about being progressive and trying new things and, and not just sticking to that all the more. Yeah, to, to that theme, for the answer to your first question, if the charter of Google X was, which is very compatible with Google's oral charter, but it's to take bold risks um, and to really push the edge of technology in, in a way that makes a big difference. And you know what? What made me excited about this project is we were you know, in the early days uh, talking to, to Sebastian uh, about it. Was I felt that there was the convergence of the the, the power of technology just this shrinking, amazing computational power, uh, combined with uh, now the ability of, well, how could you really make that transform the way they interact with computing? Like, what is the, what is the next form factor for computing? And, uh, you know, I'm not going to declare it, but here it is today, but I, I think that we are definitely pushing the limits. We're asking that question. You know, I have a great deal of optimism. Um, that I think is our job as Google X and as Google is to, to push the edges of technology uh, you know, beyond where they've been uh, to to where the future might be. But, um, well, one more thing to that. I, it's, my, it's my expectation that while today, when people first see uh, something that's born in your head, it might be unusual or a, sort of a new, unusual experience. My expectation, expectation is that in, in three years, four years, uh, that watching people hold an object in their hand, looking down at it, uh, that that will start to become unusual. And, and, and then that actually is awkward. We're, you, we're accustomed to it now, so that will actually be awkward. And, and this will be normal. That, that's what I'm going to Okay, I know we'll walk away with it. Okay, yes. Uh, Liz Games from All Things Geek. Um, I, so I find some of the examples that you've given really compelling about like taking a picture with your kids while you're swinging them around or getting a notification while you're biking. It's, you know, getting out of your way and just bring something. But it also seems like you're putting something in between you and other people. And I wonder how that's been for you guys testing. How do your families feel about this? Are they getting annoyed with you because you're getting an email while they're talking to you? Um, well, if I may say, uh, there have definitely been situations where, uh, you know, I felt like we got the software wrong. <laughs> and this is a lot of iteration, a lot of testing. And, uh, you know, when you have something that's like buggy and crashing and it's there, that's a real problem. That's why I feel like the, actually the software challenge for this is, uh, um, I would say it's you know, harder than the hardware challenge, but there, there is, there's a comparable level of innovation uh, that's getting put, to, put into the user experience and to the software uh, because it's much more intrusive actually. You know, if my phone goes haywire right now, uh, fine. If it's like in my eye, you know, that's, that's a real issue. And it, honestly, we have had bugs in my wife. Uh, but actually, I would say over the past month or two, as we've really refined it, uh, I found it's like really easy. I don't have that issue. In fact, we've tuned it, uh, you know, in, in my case, which we're now making actually the default for everybody, it only shows uh, priority messages. Actually, this, we have Gmail on the back end has a lot of smarts about what it shows to you and not. And therefore, it tends to show me something only when it's important. And in fact, right now, the way it's configured, it won't actually even show it to me. I hear a little ding, I look up, then I see it. If I don't look up, I don't see it. But it's that fine, yeah, it, it takes a lot of skill and effort. These people are working hard to make that work right. Uh, and I'm optimistic. I, I think it's, it's ultimately less disruptive than these devices can be uh, because of how you, know, you end up holding it, looking down, and really taking you away from the people and the environment around you. So I would say that. No, I think really. Right in front of me, I was like a huge step. And um, I forget sometimes that I wear it. Like today, I was like, shit, I need to put my device on. And then, no, I'm already wearing it. And, and maybe that sounds weird because you all can see that I'm wearing it. But I think, you know, as long as you can look into people's eyes, I think that's like baseline. When you can do that, that's, you know, what we can do. I can also add that at least my aspiration is not to interrupt people. 
So we're going to leave people in charge, and if they need access to information, then they can go access to information. But they're in charge. Uh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Mike, let's do with the AP. Um, since you're here and he's not, could we get you to answer the question about Larry, whether it's oh, a long-term issue? And then I also have another question about when you would expect um, this to be available to consumers, now that developers are getting started. Um, yeah, Larry, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, but he, he did lose his voice. Um, and, uh, you know, we, will, we, will, we didn't want to stress him out by trying to have him try to talk a whole lot uh, like that, because I don't think that would be great for it. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, I think he's been like a far more effective CEO <laughs> uh, since then, because we have, and, and we've been a more productive company. It's amazing. We should have everybody just uh, uh, um, work, you know, through thoughtful text, and, uh, and perhaps, you know, occasionally when they need to say something, you know, they really think about it. Uh, so it's limited to his voice. One, it's, limited, it's limited to his voice only. There's no other health issues. Is he, he just has an issue with his voice. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not, you know, worried about what it, but I want the voice to work. What is the issue with his voice? The fact that it's stretching over a long period and you know that you'll still have an issue in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, it's, just, it's not just a sore throat. I'm not a doctor. You know, <laughs> anyway, you know, his voice is out. It has been out for, you know, a, a couple of weeks, and, you know, we really want him to recover. Has he seen a doctor? No. I think All right. All right. Stay away from his medical history. Yes. Uh, what about the consumer? When is it going to be? Oh, well, sorry. When, when do you expect the, the glasses to be available to consumers now oh, that developers are me if I tell you. But I, <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, not more, less than a year after we get these Explorer editions out. Um, yes. Um, so, oh, sorry, Josh Pulse. Yeah. Uh, so Google is sometimes a company that uh, you guys don't pay attention to design. You just start to really pay attention to design in a big way in Android. Um, I wear glasses. Uh, you showed an image of people wearing glasses on stage with this over top. But what you're wearing is extremely odd looking to most people. And if you walked in any town in America with that on, people would give you really weird looks. What are you doing? Are you talking to companies like Ray-Ban or glass makers about doing versions of glass that don't look like glass? Because I feel like if you could take away what you're doing, like, hey, I put a camera on me, people will act really natural. But this is, you guys just look like Yeah, well, let me, you know, first of all, I'll mostly want this, we'll talk about that. But let me just intro. You know, we had two paths that we could go down. And uh, in fact, our initial instincts were to make these look as much as possible like glasses, kind of like disguised, if you will, as glasses. And when we went through the design options, we decided. Let's be bold, and uh, this is something different. It's not actually glasses. Uh, I, you know, some people go through a fair amount of trouble not to wear glasses. You know, they go through contacts, and all that stuff. So uh, let's make it look different. Let's be bold. Um, that's not to say we won't create things like that in the future, uh, but kind of given, and, and, and we made mock-ups of a lot of things that looked roughly like glasses, and we just weren't satisfied with that side, and we're pretty excited about this one. Just about this one. Yeah, so I think, um, I think early on we wanted to, to yes, yeah, like you said, this is something new, and it, we, should, we want to be honest, and we don't want to try and conceal it behind something, and then have people feel like it's creepy. Um, so this is, it is what it is. This is Google Glass, and that's. But then there are situations when people who need you need sunglasses out in the sun. You need prescription glasses. Some people need prescription glasses, and the whole idea was to try and minimize the the size of this, cram it into this tiny form factor compared to how how powerful it is, and and create a design that's actually this frame in fact. I mean this this could I could literally throw it out and put uh, uh, conceptually uh, I want it, but um, uh, put I don't know if you saw some of the pictures, but you know, adding on uh, uh, regular glasses. Right? So how would I how would I wear I mean how would I wear glasses? Would I just sit would they sit on top of my glasses or uh, ideally no. So there would be like we're experimenting with ways of creating glass plus glasses. So it would be uh, something that fits onto this. And, and just to answer the question, we haven't met with a lot of glass, glasses manufacturers. 
uh, uh, both of the some last Friday as well as prescription uh, glasses. Um, but that, you did the contact lens. Uh, well, let me, can, can I, um, I don't come back to that, but I do want to make the full loop on that. Uh, so, okay, yes, sir. Uh, we share a slash in the room room. Yeah. I have talked to um, driving shippers, to the driving safety experts, about the, um, about the implications of having stuff coming in in Japan. Um, we actually do an amazing amount of work <laughs> in, uh, with respect to driving safety for our self driving car project, program, which is also with Google Works. Uh, so, we do have a lot of that expertise. Uh, we haven't talked to them. Um, and, uh, uh, well, also, there is a set of, right now, sort of standards, whatever, the notion that you shouldn't show something more than a certain amount of text and whatnot. Uh, but let me speak to the, just the general experience. Uh, you know, finding some short amount of text sort of up here, you know, on the ceiling of your car, but out in space, you know, focused to where you're driving, uh, as compared to, you know, on your, let's say, instrument panel. Um, actually, I find, like, really feels much safer. I know that obviously the heads up displays are available on the cars now, but that tends to be a limited amount of information and somewhat predictable. This um, is sort of a, a less predictable screen. Well, no, actually, we, we try to give a very limited amount of information. And as I mentioned, for example, when you get a message, you actually have to, you know, I get a big and I look up to see it if I choose to. But if I feel that's not safe, I'm not going to, or if I don't care. Uh, and in fact, then those messages are short. We don't show, we don't let you show like read the pages of email or something like that. We show you something very short. Um, we've experimented with different numbers. Uh, as I said, this is uh, ongoing work, but I actually feel really good based on our experiences and the expertise that we actually have in house on, on uh, driving safety um, that this is going to improve safety. We're also working on, it, on it. the ability to. Listen to an incoming message instead of reading it, which can often be. Yeah, I should mention the more, more than work we have. I mean, that, that, that works. And, uh, you know, when people feel like they want to get a message without distracting their eyes, so they do uh, listen to it. Um, but, but, but even for reading short things, it's, I feel it's, it's, it's safer than having something down here right next to you. Uh, I'm going to try to, here, I'll work back across because you guys didn't get your hands up time. All right, yes. Yes. How do you how do you see this tying into Google Data Services and in particular uh, like perhaps Google Drive? Because if people start recording every minute of their lives, you have a huge data storage requirement there. So how do you see this eventually tying in with, with the other services? Yeah, I'd say we've been pretty uh, fortunate to have all these uh, cloud services available. I mean, obviously, other companies can take advantage of them too. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, 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 we use, for example, instant upload uh, for, for pictures. Uh, videos are larger, which we actually, we haven't kind of finished how that interaction is going to work right now. With them. Uh, typically, when we, first of all, what I can take right now is just we limit it to 15 seconds of video. We just want to capture a moment, which kind of, for, for a lot of reasons, uh, and it's manageable amount of data, but we just manually take that off. Uh, and um, but but it's great to have those services. And what you saw today from uh, Google Now, for example, uh, I mean that's that's amazing for the work that we're doing. And uh, in terms of you know figuring out what are you likely to want to see, because you know, we don't want to be caught sick giving this thing on input. And also uh, being able to use speech as an input and answering basic questions, just little bits of information. So we've been experimenting with all those pieces of. Uh, and uh, I think we've been very lucky to, to be able to work with other people to do a lot of those pieces. This product uh, could never have come as far as it has come, and will never be able to be you know, a real product if we didn't have the whole company uh, to, uh, to work with. Just, just from, uh, from, from the ubiquity point of view, if, if what you say is true in three or four years, this is common, are, are the, the, the telecom or the infrastructure there to support this? Oh, uh, well, actually, yeah. well, actually, we're, we're so another challenge uh, is battery life. Uh, it has a much smaller battery than a smartphone. Yet our you know, our hope is that you know, we don't we don't want it to to run out of batteries after after an hour of use. Our hope is that you can wear it all day and be fine. So 
we're actually, one, one way of attacking that is to optimize the data that does flow from the device to the cloud, when and how it's done, and so there are many things we're doing to actually <coughs> reduce the amount of data that we compared to today's market. Yeah, that's actually not the way that even on your particular Android phone, uh, it's not what works is, uh, you know, it'll wait for certain things to wi fi it'll wait for it to wi fi it'll wait for it to wi fi it'll wait for it to wi fi that's what I was doing. But this is a really long service on the web app, which is now. But a lot of other stuff is like, you can go along with it. It is, it's like, it's a It's, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, so what we will do, the journal will actually do this for us. It'll do all these investment and get networks to be faster. Uh, yes, uh, Peter Hoff, Tech yes. Just curious, what sort of functionality is actually working today in the current OS? Like beyond taking photos and videos, what kind of messages are actually receiving? Text? Um, yeah, we've done, we kind of, um, I mean, we've, through our prototypes, we've kind of run a huge number of different things. Uh, at any given time, certain ones are turned on or turned off based on how we deem both the stability and Satisfaction with the user experience, uh, but it, yes, uh, SMSs, emails, um, Hangouts, uh, tried navigation. We kind of, I mean, we are always experimenting, and then there's, and that takes a lot of work first of all. But then there's a hundred things that we've, you know, kind of gotten going in one form or another to bring it back so, to a coherent offering that that even first of all, all of us can wear day to day, and then. Probably a broader group that will be wearing it day to day. You know, there's a lot of work doing that and, and, and selecting for that because some things, while we might be able to do technically in the lab, uh, we might just not feel it's as easy or as, uh, you know, as uh, that fits within our understanding of user experience as well as we might like it. Uh, we prefer to hold off on excuses. Uh, far high band, you can play. So, can you talk about the input method? Like, beyond just taking a picture, like, can you respond to emails? Can you browse the web? And how do you control it? Uh, so, the things that I can tell you once again, what we've experimented with, and more, you know, actually, is uh, it's very increased active now. Uh, yeah, you can, you can respond by speech, for example. Um, we have tried a variety of other text entry things, but that's been the most successful. Uh, we also experimented with using, you know, Using your phone, if you want to use size text or device or things like that. Um, uh, right, so like I said, yeah. we've experimented responding with a picture. And actually, earlier in the presentation um, for, for Android today, you could respond with like canned messages. We tried that as well. Um, and like, if you, if you text me, I can also respond by uh, like a phone call. So there's a variety of ways to respond without having to type out. Um, Do you see Tice as the main, the main way? Uh, well, voice is one of the ones that you know has been working pretty well, but uh, but like I said, you, know, you can respond to a picture too. You know. I've sometimes done that actually. Somebody sent me a, 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 an email, and you know, I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? You know, just how do this you, is what I'm doing. You know, it's obviously I'm on stage. And talking. How do you like click a link on the web? Um, you know, once again, this is uh, something we've. Uh, we definitely we've, we've experimented. We've have, uh, had at very times web browsing in there. Um, it's not something that we feel sort of is polished enough. Well, that, and I'm not sure we want people actually broadly trying to browse the web on this device. Like at some level, if you're going to take something, it's going to take you, you know, not like 10 seconds, not 30 seconds, but like a few minutes or whatever. Like maybe you should switch to your phone and go, you know, find another device. Um, we're trying to. We're trying to, first of all, try all these things, but at the same time, when we, things that we are you know, pushing to even our internal users, things we're likely to push to a broader audience, we don't keep, want people to ever end up doing something that's really unpleasant to them. So we'd rather just not have that. So we're doing all these experiments, but it always comes back to where the guiding principle is keeping people in the moment and getting technology out of the way. So that's why, yeah, if you're going to be browsing the web and, and distracting you, that's we could come up with a way to interact with that, but of course, that's not going to be too hard for everyone. Uh, okay, we finished this slide. Remember, yes, sir, back. Can you 
And we've gotten a lot of questions about that. I know that we've uh, been very fortunate in this company that it's been one of our successful revenue streams, but no, not at all. Uh, we don't have any plans uh, for advertising, uh, and uh, we're, uh, I mean, we're, we're pretty excited with this product, and uh, we're, our plans are to sell it. Uh, yeah, I, I can do a couple more, so I'll bounce back to this side of the room. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, well, we, we definitely, we've definitely we definitely talked about things like that um, and experimented with them. Um, it's not those, it, it's what a lot of people kind of think about when they talk about wearable computing, uh, but it's actually not one of the things that offhand we found to be the, you know, the most compelling, uh, I mean, not, not to say we'll never support it, but it's not been like the most trying stuff like that or even imagining how it would work or how often it would be useful. We've not been quite as excited about it as, as, as uh, I don't know, science fiction movies might be. Uh, uh, but we do, of course, have, you know, have the, all the capabilities of Google Goggles. We, uh, we could try to recognize friend viewers if you want to, you know, automatically share that picture with them. I could take a picture of them and it sends it to them. Stuff like that uh, could work. And we played with it. Um, it's not at any level of sophistication uh, uh, right now that I'd want to oversell it. Let's see, maybe one last, okay, yes, we had some questions. Uh, yes, yeah, so we need to finish off this. So back, you, uh, you did the contact lens, which now has, I guess, one pixel in it. When do we get to a point where that thing that you're wearing is actually in your eye? Um, and actually, if you can answer, I have a second question. Is, can you all just kind of tell a story of what your moment of zen was when you were you said about riding a bike? What was the one thing where you were like, oh shit, this thing's amazing? So, in, in terms of contact lenses, I'm obviously excited about this, but there was an immense amount of work you had to make this one, and then there's like many, many more of the things that were difficult to incorporate every technology that we have into a contact lens. So I think a sophisticated contact lens display is totally wireless is many, many years away, unfortunately. So. But, but let me add that. Actually, this is how we kind of ended up coming together to start this project. I met Babak. Uh, actually, I didn't introduce this. Um, and um, I was talking to him as I like, Oh, you're, you're working on display and contact lens? That sounds crazy. But if you can do that, I bet you actually could make you know, a wearable display that works. So it was, uh, in a way, it was that kind of bold, crazy thinking. And this is for the rest of you might not know. This is Bob's university work was in contact lenses and putting displays and other kinds of uh, sensors and stuff in them. Uh, and uh, I was just, I was blown away about it, by that ambition. And uh, you know, we took it down one notch for this uh, this uh, this project for now, but we're going to keep things ambitious to pull the lens for sure. And I'm, I'm super excited about it. Oh, then you were asking about moments. Maybe we should go down. Steve, you mentioned one. Do you have a? Yeah. So actually, what, one thing that that I've been anticipating from doing the project is, is being able to share your view live, like we demonstrated today, jumping out of uh, out of airplane. So I'm excited for it. Not just, not just for those extraordinary events, uh, which all of us can enjoy, but just for the everyday uses that all of us can apply. And so for me, a few months ago, we finally got those up, the, the Hangouts working on class. And one of, one of my colleagues went shopping, and I was able to virtually join, join him while he was shopping. And it was just such a powerful experience, him being able to like, point out different things on the shelf, and I was able, it felt like I was there. It felt so cool and so natural. Because I think each and every person can figure out how to apply that to their daily life, and it would be very good to know. I think for me, I, I think we, I mentioned this in the presentation too, but early on we understood that if this is not light, you're not gonna wear it, and then you're not gonna be able to experience these really cool moments. So every time we build a new prototype, the first thing I do is run to the scale and put it on there and say, yes, five grams less. And that makes a huge difference on your notes, even sub grams. And I think just to get to that point, like when the latest prototype came in, and it was so light compared to anything 
that's on the market that we've been trying to build before compared to cell phone, compared to my sunglasses. My sunglasses are much heavier than this. Um, and I actually forget that I'm wearing it. So that, for me, was one of the moments where I was really, really excited. So I would say my Zen moment was uh, one of our earlier experimental prototypes. <laughs> it kind of looked like this. And they had a feature that I'm not sure if we're going to ship or not, but uh, we could do audio switch. And the way it worked was literally I could do this. What's the capital trying? And I did the answer immediately in front of me. And it was just amazing. I suddenly actually felt I knew a lot more. So my knowledge was not just my personal knowledge anymore, but the broader knowledge available on the internet. So, in a sense, something with the broader knowledge of the community, basically, you feel you know everything that other human beings know. It could be incredibly powerful. We're very far from that actually, but we're taking the steps to get there. And we're just uh, and, and for me, it was uh, it, it, you know it was actually one of sort of like goals I didn't mention, but um, playing with my son and uh, you know the feeling like you toss your son up in the air and uh, you know how can you capture that moment because it's, it's such a special moment of all the other children. You know, when you toss them into the air, it's exciting, they're exhilarated, they're flying. And uh, to me, that's such a special moment that obviously I couldn't capture that on the camera. Oh, I just dropped my son. Um, and uh, um, finally being able to do that, I actually ended up doing it on, uh, you know, using a little video clip because it's easier to time things still. But, uh, you know, capturing that, uh, I mean, to me, that was like amazing. Wow, I, I never. There's no way I'd have this in my if it wasn't for this device. So, on that note, uh, I'm sort of afraid we don't have time for more questions, but uh, thank you all very much. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Now, uh, we could, uh, Rachel's going to be spooked, and everybody's going to be spooked. Why don't we try these out? Maybe you guys can queue up. We can do obviously four people at a time, but I ask you just, you know, spend 10 seconds. We're going to put it in a demo mode because if anyone, let's see the UI is a little scary. Uh, but you're going to actually get a chance to really see the display and experience the audio coming in and uh, actually your head motion. Hi. It's going to finish badly. It's not going to be pretty. Not pretty. <laughs>